Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing a video about the books that I really enjoyed in 2018. Um, last year I really started like trying to track my reading and I had like a reading goal and everything. I didn't quite meet it last year. My reading goal was 50. This year my reading goal is also 50 and I didn't end up meeting the goal last year. I think I got to around 30 but it was because like there were certain pockets where I was like really busy and then I just sort of completely fell off from reading books. But aside from that, um, I did read some really, really awesome books uh, last year and, and I think it would just be really awesome to share with you guys what those favorites were and what I read and maybe it'll inspire you to read some of those this year. So I'm just going to jump right into it. The first book that I have is Go Ask Alice. So the story behind this book for me is that I've had this book for years, um, probably like three or four years, and I've read it before and I've seen the movie, but it's been probably three or four years since I've read the book and seen the movie. So last year I kind of just, I don't know, you know when you get like that urge where like, you're just like, I want to reread, you know, this book that you really enjoyed. This is absolutely one of my favorite books of all time. Um, like if I had to do like my favorite, like, you know, on my favorites list, this book is on it. And so I had the urge to reread it. And so that's what I did. I reread the book and then I watched the movie again. And I completely almost forgot like how much I really enjoy it. Um, that being said, this is a really sort of, I mean, this is kind of a scary book in a way because it's about like a teenager who starts off, you know, moving somewhere new and she's very like shy so she doesn't have many friends and then during one summer when her be the one friend that she makes goes away she starts hanging out with some of the more popular people in school that leads to her accidentally taking LSD and from there she basically gets hooked on drugs and the entire book is written in a diary style and it's based um, off of a real person's diary and the movie for this book was made in I was like I want to say like 1971 or something, like something around there. It was like the early 1970s, so it's very old, but you can find it on YouTube. And um, I, I still do really like the movie too. It's just, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what it is about this for me. I think it's because it's so personal and because it's in that journal style is why I like it. But rereading this for me um, was really great last year and I would definitely recommend it. There was also a bunch of these, um, oh, like a bunch of these like journal style books that have been published as well. And I have another one that's the same style and it's called Lucy in the Sky. Same thing, these are all based off of real um journals real like teenagers and their stories so i think they're really great reads um even if you're sort of like a young adult i wouldn't say like you know maybe like 14 but maybe by like maybe like 17 18 even is like a good age if you're gonna like read these and anything older than that i mean yeah <laughs> so i would absolutely recommend this. this is one of my favorite books of all time so um, the next book that I have that I read last year, this was like a thriller suspense in a way. It really had you on edge. So this book is called Behind Closed Doors and it is by B.A. Paris. So basically this book is about a couple. So their names are Jack and Grace and it's the it's kind of typical at first because it's like they seem like the perfect couple and everything seems so nice. Grace is the perfect wife. But then when everyone leaves the house and the dinner party is over, there's sort of like the truth to their relationship. So the husband is basically psycho <laughs> and he keeps her locked in a room. It's not even so perfect. And really, it, it the book goes back and forth between their current day and then flashbacks in their relationship. And so the wife, Grace, also has a sister um, named Millie and she has Down syndrome and he kind of manipulates her with that because he will be like, oh, well, if you don't comply with X, Y, and Z, then we're not going to go see your sister this weekend. And then you're going to miss out on a lunch or something else. So it's kind of like psychological torture in a way, too, that he kind of gets her and but yet they have like dinner parties and all types of stuff at their house and everyone thinks that they're just like this perfect couple. Grace is so perfect, she cooks great 
and really like it's super super twisted this book i think i read this out in like two days it was just really good for me and such a page turner it's not very long either i think it was i want to say how long was it it was like 330 mm -hmm. 340 pages roughly i just like had to flip through and check so it's not a very long book and yeah it was if you are when you know when you get into a book and it's a page turner you're just gonna fly through it so that's what happened to me with this book flew through it in two days it was just it was really really good and i liked the ending as well so i would highly recommend this as well really i w i'm gonna recommend every book in this video because these are all books that i read last year that are you know favorites of mine for 2018 i'm not even focused okay <laughs> there we go and so the next thing that i have so these are two books but um mm -hmm. i'm kind of gonna put them together as one so these are from the chronicles of Prydain by Lord, Lloyd, uh, lloyd alexander so these fall under the young adult category as well and basically, um, I decided to read these because one of my favorite Disney movies is The Black Cauldron. Mm -hmm. If you guys are familiar with that movie, um, it's one of the older Disney movies that came out in, I think, maybe the 70s or 80s as well. But I really, I really, really like that movie. And I was watching it, um, you know, it was last year again, I was watching the movie and I was like... This movie is based off of books. I've never read the books. So what I decided, so, you know, what, yeah, what I decided to do is just go to the bookstore, find the books. They weren't very expensive either. They were like, they're like 11 .50. Well, Canadian. <laughs> I'm from Canada, so these are in Canadian prices. But they were like 11 .50 each, so I only paid like 20 something dollars for them, which is good if you ask me. So I got both of them, and I read the two of these out in like a week. Um... They are really awesome. I, I really liked it personally because I can compare between the movie and the books, of course, and see like what the differences were. And the differences were really interesting because there was a whole bunch of characters that they didn't include in the movie. And even some of the, I guess you can say like the interactions between the characters were kind of similar, but the way the plots unfold in these two books are really geared by some of the other characters that they don't include in the Disney movie. And aside from that too, the Disney movie is kind of, so the first book in the series is called, oh wait, sorry, this one is the first book in the series, it's called The Book of Three. And then this is the second book in the series, which is called The Black Cauldron. So basically these two books is where the movie has pulled from, from what I've gathered. These are the two I read because from what I sort of got, because I read the backs of all of them to see which ones were most relevant to the movie, and it was really these two. So the first book kind of gathers the parts of the first half of the movie, and then the second book sort sort of, you know, pieces are taken for the second half of the movie. Like the Horned King, um, the those three witchy sisters, I don't remember their name, but in the first book is where like Henwen, who's the, um, you know, the fortune telling pig kind of goes running off and then he has to find her and stuff. But the story is still different. And there's like a different king who isn't the Horn King. But yeah, basically, it's really it was really interesting to compare and contrast. And I really like these. If you're um, a young adult and you're into like fantasy and stuff or like, you know, anything with like castles and <laughs> medieval sort of magic to it, these are really, really good. And, or if you're just like me and you're older, but you're like a Disney freak, these are really, really good too. I really enjoyed them and I definitely want to read out the rest of the series. I think there's seven books? No, six books in total in the series. So I'm two in and I got four more to go, which eventually I'll get to and read those. <laughs> and next I've got The Egyptian. So really fun story with this book. Um, I was downtown one day and I was with like a friend and we decided to go into like this random cafe because I was helping her with something. There were no seats so we kind of like turned a corner to see if there was any more seats anywhere and turned out the cafe had like this big shelf and like a little nook and it was like the like um, a take a book leave a book area 
And so I was like, ooh, books, you know, and mind you, I didn't know it was there. So I didn't exactly have a book to take or have a book to leave, I should say. But this caught my attention. And the minute I read like the description of it, I was sold. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna take it. And I'm so sorry, I don't have to, I don't have a book to leave, but like, whatever, you know? And my plan was like, when I finished reading it, I'm gonna return it and just leave a book to sort of compensate. But the fun thing is I never returned the book. I love this book way too much. I fell in love with it completely. I took it on vacation with me. This book has been everywhere with me for a good like this took like a month and a half to read I'll be honest because if you can like see <laughs> the print is really really small and this book is almost six no it's like 500 pages basically so I took this book with me when I was going to like art classes on my train rides I went to Jamaica this book came with me this book has been in a lot of places so long story short this book takes place in the ancient Egypt times and it's written in a very old style English and the main character is a man named Sunu and it starts off <clears throat> him retelling his childhood into his adulthood. He's a doctor at the time um, of you know ancient Egypt so he's familiar with like medicine and all those old techniques and um, it follows his whole journey. I'm like, where's the synopsis of this somewhere that I could maybe like <laughs> sum it up at, like just quickly for you guys because there's so much characters in the book. There's so much different situations that happen. It's it's really hard in a way to like put it into words. But what I will say is that if you are into historical fiction, if you're interested in like ancient Egypt, I would highly, highly recommend this book. It is so accurate, I feel, that like it's insane like when you read it you really do feel like this is what ancient Egypt was like that's the vibe that I get from this book and it was just yeah like it's so detailed it's so accurate that like old speaking way um you know it just makes you feel like you're there and you can really picture it so this book was kind of like it just it just made you dive into the world <laughs> to say the least and this is by mika waltari also um and i will link all of these in my bio if you guys want to like check them out look them up um i link all of them on goodreads so you can look at like further reviews as well but like personally if you're a historical fiction type of person l read this book it's it's so good like so good um <laughs> yeah i'll go on forever about it but i don't want to make this video too long and i still have one more book so the last book I have is called Coolie Woman, The Odyssey of Indenture, and this is by Gay Gayatra Bahadur. So this book um, was very personal for me when I read it. So it's basically a history book <laughs> about indenture. And if you don't know what indenture is, to make a long story short, after the abolition of slavery in the Caribbean, um, all these plantations had no workers, so what they did is the British sought out um, labor from people in India and hence why the Caribbean is so diverse. There's Afro-Caribbean people, Indo-Caribbean people. I am Indo-Caribbean, so the, hence why the book was so personal to me um, because it was really like a deep look into my own history and it was... It was great. It's it's not a very long book. It's again, it's like 200, I think it's like 210 pages or something like that. But it's packed with information, like packed with information, like chronicled dates about when things happened, stories that happened, cases that happened during that sort of period of indenture, which was I think around 100 years. Um, there's just, if you are of Indo-Caribbean background and you are really looking for somewhere to learn more about your history because, um, like if you feel me, there's not a ton of resources out there for us and it kind of sucks sometimes. So I would highly, highly recommend this book. It was really, really awesome. It gets a little daunting at times because it really feels like you're reading like a textbook, but the information is really worth it, like really, really, really worth it. And this, like this information has just gone a long way for me. So I'm very happy to have this as part of my collection as well. 
So that's all I have for today. Um, those were my five favorite books that I read last year in 2018. I hope that it inspires some of you guys to take a read um, of those books as well if you haven't. And if you have read any of them, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know what you guys thought about those books too, if you love them as much as I did or maybe you didn't. I don't know. But that's all for me today and I will see you guys next week. Bye!